We are his instruments by Winston Mayo. We are his instruments and being in tune with him is key. How can we measure the highs and lows of this life when we know that God is the God of the hills and the valleys, the day and crescendos of this world? How can we forget that Christ climbed and crescendoed himself up Calvary's cross as God himself descended and decrescendoed himself from off his throne to meet us in the pit. Christ incarnate decrescendoed and descended in the trenches with us that by knowing our wrong notes would register a heaven resonance that we will receive our heaven residence. He heard our brash, brash, clay cry and he sounded the trumpet and instead gave up his last breath knowing that bloody blow of his would win would be the bloody blow that would win us back from being lost to his fold and tearing the veil of hell that no demonic devilish cord could prevail against Emmanuel sounding his bell seeing that sin was the string section that would separate and section us off from him, but instead of sin stretching us thin, it no longer can win from his mercy and grace, not allowing it to separate us from his love. God's grace was heaven's harmonious harmony, blending and purchasing a blood-bought body, a spirit and skeleton, the infinite with the finite, with God and man and the son of man. And though humanity took a hit and was percussed and concussed and pushed out of our purpose, yet and still the strokes of his stripes banded us and bandaged us together with him, aiding us to be in step with him, that we would not march with the mark of the beast, but instead to the beat of his drum we sound, majoring in the seal of his salvation, the blood of him, being the symbol of his love. Who could have orchestrated such a symphony of his sympathy, fixing salvation's perfect synergy? And who and why and how and all the other questions of the world could not explain what he did? And how could we not conduct ourselves accordingly, even though our accordion faith leads us astray when we know we should stay, but yet and still God has such an air about him that as we push away, it causes us to grow closer with him. Oh, what a play. Oh, what a stage is his grace. Who can number and note the quarters of the centuries and millennia that our Savior has favored us and taken us with our off-temple halves to make us whole with the hold of his hold that we would love his fold and know us as his own? <laughs> And though we were kicked out of the garden, Eden, for we have sinned, he became sin himself and stepped in with redemption's repentive rhythm, singing a song of his choir. Oh, what a familiar hymn are those hymns about him that we say. I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I am free, his eyes are on the sparrow, so I know he watches me along with all of us. So how can we not get in rhythm with creation's waltz that moves us and cut time as we are moved to cut ties to the world and be and step and in sync with his son? We are merely his instruments, instructed to be intimate with him, with his finished work that need not be repeated, salvation's playlist that shuffled us with him and himself, that grace should not be replayed but simply repaid by him that he 
offered us his instruments. You know I